Hello, and welcome to the latest webinar in our spring series of the Education and Schools Fair. And I'm delighted to have join me today James McDonald, Director, and Dr. David Willows, Director of Advancement International School of Brussels. So, welcome to you both. And the topic for today is how COVID-19 is changing the future of the International School of Brussels, which all sounds fascinating. And uh, we're really looking forward to teasing that out from both of you. So James, you're director at the International School of Brussels um, and have been an educator, international educator for most of your career. Um, you've worked in your native Canada, as well as Singapore, Japan, Thailand, the UAE and Belgium. Um, so that will be very familiar territory to uh, a lot of our listeners. So well, today. Thank you. It's a, it's a long list, isn't it? As you read it out, I'm thinking, gosh, <laughs> I must be getting older. Yeah. No, well, that's very good experience. And David, yourself, you're Director of Advancement at the International School of Brussels. So I think that's a long and distinguished career with the school, uh, 16 years, isn't is that correct? Yep, that's correct. And covering different areas and before that, um, you've worked in different fields and I know you're very interested in the creative side and you've got a, a blog which people will find fascinating to read to keeping up with uh, new trends. So thank you for joining us today. Um, so shall we start with you, David? Um, you've worked at uh, ISB for 16 years now, as I've just said. So how has the school and the families it serves changed, do you think, over this time? Yeah, that's a great question, Fiona. I think, um, I think, I think in many ways um, that that the school. One of the things about ISB that people love is is the fact that the school um, really is is it has that has some very consistent values, um, and and in some ways the school uh, is the same as it was um, sixteen years ago, but of course um, uh, things ha some things have changed. Um, we, we we are still a school where, in some ways, I would say, um, for for most of our families, eighty five percent of our families, uh, it, we're serving expatriate families who are globally mobile and moving to Belgium. Um, and for those families, we are, if you like, a, a local uh, a local school. Um, and for a small population um, in the community, we we actually are an international school if you like, providing windows onto the world. Um, and if I look back over the 16 years, one of the things I guess I notice is, is that in many ways as parents and as the parents that come to visit us, um, what we notice is that so many of them have the same questions. As parents, we all want certain things for our children. Um, we want them to fit into a new school. Um, we want them to uh, make friends. We want them to transition well. Um, we want them to be challenged. We want them to be stretched. We want them to find their best self. Um, and ultimately, we want them to, to be safe and then move on when the time comes to the next stage of their education. And I think those questions haven't changed too much over 16 years. Of course, the school has grown and evolved and we have new buildings and new facilities. Um, and one of the other things that we've changed um, is the way perhaps we have uh, we have approached those families. 16 years ago, uh, we were very much of the opinion that what families needed was lots of information about the school, lots of facts, lots of figures. And our websites were full of facts and information. And one of the things that we've started to do, I suppose, is, is begin to think that actually there's an opportunity here to help families learn whether or not this is the right school for for them. Um, and, and so we now have changed in the sense that we spend a lot of time helping families uh, through a series of activities and exercises learn whether or not this is the right school for them. And that, I think, probably from an admissions point of view, is the biggest change that I've seen. Hmm. So they're looking for these special moments. And we were talking just a few minutes about that, the sort of magic of this special visit when they come to see you. I, I, absolutely, and I and I think and I think one of the things uh, we know is that um, 
Um, again, if you give somebody a brochure, they maybe they don't read it um, when they take it home, even if it feels comforting at the time. But if you if you um, bring them into an experience room where they can actually play a game, they can talk to their children about what's important to them when choosing a school, and there's a series of interactive exercises. Actually, those are the kinds of things that we believe can provide those moments that families can can really feel like this is a school that is listening to them and and taking them seriously. Um, mm. So that's something that is really important to us. Mm. And of course, you, James, sadly, <laughs> have not seen these magic moments and the wonderful admissions um, because you joined as director only last summer. So what was that like, joining this wonderful community in the middle of a global pandemic? <laughs> I think if there was a word, it's probably surreal. And even <laughs> as you ask that question, I think back of how much celebration I had when I just got a visa to get into the country with all the restrictions that were in place. And, and um, it really was unlike an ex any experience I've had in my career. I, I think, you know, and, and back to that word surreal, I, I'm just very conscious of the fact that I've joined an amazing community with so many wonderful people, but I haven't been able to fully experience it. So for example, we have, I think by many measures, the largest athletics program and probably the largest fine, fine arts program, performing arts anywhere in Belgium. But I have yet to see the students performing uh, apart from video, right? There, the, we have this incredibly supportive um, parent community, right? That I get to meet over Zoom and you can feel the, the, the connection there through the screen, but they can't come on campus. So I've yet to see this place buzzing after school with all these amazing parents. Because when I talk to alumni, I talk to, 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 to teachers, to, to students, they say, what's so special about here is the community. But I've only got a portion of it. So I've, I've come in as this very fortunate new director, but only able to experience part of the school. And I've, I've said it's a little bit like celebrating Christmas over the month of December, where I'm slowly <laughs> unpacking these, these presents. Um, the other thing to that, though, on... on, on you know, a less personal note would be that when I come in at a time in August where we are read it, um, you know, that moment of the crisis where we started seeing numbers increase in Belgium quite rapidly into the fall, we are in a mode where as a new leader, it, it's just so important to try to keep the school open and first and foremost, keep everyone safe and healthy. And when I've gone into new roles in different settings previously, it's been about going in, listening, deciding what priorities to say yes to, what to say no. And in some ways, um, this provided some clarity in terms of priority that wouldn't be there if I came in on a regular year. That, that really we, we were all aligned on what the most important thing was, and that was keeping, keeping us safe and maximizing on-campus learning. So, so that, in retrospect, again, very surreal, but it is something that I'm sure I'll never have to face again in my career, or at least I'm pretty sure <laughs> <laughs> that I wouldn't have to do that. So it, it's been an amazing year of learning, and I think as an educator and as an institution, we celebrate that learning. And I don't want to be too Pollyanna about the challenges of COVID and the deaths and the the, the sickness that, that it represents. But at the same time, it's also allowed us to to grow and develop. And I, and I can't help but think that my first year was a really hard year in many respects, but also a really good one for 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 us as a community to bring us together and for for me to grow as a leader. So. Mm -hmm. But I've come up again and again over the years, speaking to leaders such as yourselves, that the amount of trust that parents put in the school community and um, is really enormous. And so for you, if you got that trust and you haven't even met face to face, I think that's a, a wonderful accolade, really, and uh, the school working together as a community. Um, things can only get better. <laughs> but, yeah, yeah I, I would just say on that, one of the things that I've been so fortunate about though is to have such an incredible team of people that are here, that there is such a high level of trust in the community for colleagues like David and others, that even as someone who's coming in new, I had that fortunate position of, of working with a fantastic team where that was established and they did such a good job managing things in April as well. And we've got a lot of, um, um, kudos from the, the greater Belgian community before I even joined on the handling of the pandemic. So, yeah, I just had to, had to share some of the praise there. <laughs> so, David, you're responsible for ISB for 
admissions. Um, have you noticed that the families have changed their priorities? Um, and what are they looking for from a school for their children? Well, well, one of the things that's um, um, we, we're very pleased to report is that is that the families are still very much inquiring about the school, and that's been um, a really a positive thing for us. A year ago, I think um, there was lots of uncertainty about the impact of uh, uh, on, on enrolment of, of COVID and 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 whether people would simply stop moving to Belgium, and 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 that's clearly not the case. Um, the the one of the things that's changed in terms of the relationship we have with families right now is of course many of them can't come and visit the school so normally what we'd be doing at this time of the year is very busily you know showing uh, several families every day around the school um, and, and and letting them see all the resources that we have a beautiful campus set in the middle of this forest here in in in, in the on the edge of brussels um, that's not possible so the relationship has certainly changed and we've had to learn to adapt to do these things online virtually um, by establishing resource centers and, and virtual tours and, and transitioning that whole work of helping the family learn whether or not it's the right school online. And, and in that context, I think clearly um, we notice a number of things about families at this moment. Probably we would say in general, maybe there's a bit more anxiety and uncertainty at this stage in the year because families maybe have a, a sense of what their plans are, but they're not entirely sure. So as a school, we're having to be more flexible um, in that sense. We also notice that um, many families are asking new questions. So five years ago, they weren't asking questions about uh, health and safety protocols and air ventilation systems and so on. And of course, with COVID where it is right now, we, we, have, we have to be prepared to answer those questions and, and talk about the measures that we have in place. Um, and, and we do see that in, in that sense, you know, some of the, the priority questions are changing. And at the same time, some of them are, are the questions that they always have been for many families. It's really working about working out about the programs that we offer, understanding how the curriculum works, how their student will be, how their son or daughter will be as a learner within our school, and maybe the kind of the choices of of programs that we offer towards the end of school, uh, with the IB diploma program on the one hand, and also the IB careers related program on the other, providing those end of school opportunities. And, and um, so we, we take families through those choices and, and, and lead them through that. Um, and, I think, and I think at the end of the day, one of the other things I notice about parents is that, is that they're also asking and looking for evidence of our agility in these times, uh, more so than they've ever been. Um, they want to. They want to know more about how did we transition to remote learning? How successful was that? Um, the evidence that we need to provide to show that our students were learning during this period. And and I think these are things that we've we've taken steps to really reassure families that um, we have a very robust um, system in place and also a very committed faculty that that has really. Um, done incredible things to make the experience con continuous for so many of the students. Fortunately, most of them are back on campus right now, which is which is fantastic. Mm -hmm. uh, and um, so, so we're now looking forward to a kind of a hundred percent very soon back on campus, all being well. Excellent. So, so I think those are some of the things that that really have 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 uh, in a sense been that shift over the last 12 months in, in, in parent perceptions and, and questions. Mm. And I just thought the, the space that you've got and the access to the natural world, that must be very important as well after people have been through the COVID experience. It, it, is, it, it is important. And I, and I think one of the things we've learned is that, that learning takes place best when it's in community. Um, we see that with our own children, with the students around the school, um, even with the faculty and staff when they are when they are on campus. That um, there is there is so much more connection and pleasure, and and um, 
uh, effective learning taking place around us um, when we see it taking place in this space. And there's something very important about this space for us. Hmm. All right, so James then, um, how has ISB changed, do you think, in the current crisis, both in the short term and the long term? Well, I think in a lot of ways that's yet to be yet to be determined because I think when we we do get back to normal, and if that that state will exist again, it will be a matter for us to reflect upon how have we shifted and what was deliberate and maybe what was unintentional. But I, I really love that question because learning needs reflection and it makes us reflect um, some of the initial ways in which we anticipate um, changing will be around some of our perceptions about where we go in future. So things like the hybrid learning or use of technology to carry on with what David was saying about the desire of people to be on campus and in community. This has actually been a pretty interesting experiment for all of us in education because a lot of the literature and a lot of the thinking before the crisis was moving in a direction where schools would be increasingly delivering learning remotely. And I think what we've seen here is that we can do it, and it depends on the resources, quality of teachers, and, and all of those things, but it can happen. But, but certain types of learning, it's really driven home this point, certain types of learning can work distance, probably as well as they can in, in, in a classroom. But there's a lot of other types of learning that can't. And another key point to that is motivation. Kids want to be around friends. They want to be around a community, as do colleagues. And not everybody. There's different dispositions, different personalities. But for the most part, we find when you have a lockdown, kids are really eager to get back to school <laughs> in a way that goes against that, that stereotype. And it's because we, we really do find that learning is a social process. And to be a social process process we those human connections and we can replicate much of this through screens but only to a certain point you know there's not that serendipitous interaction in the same way for instance and the social side of things which people really miss even under covid restrictions people are missing some of the social elements because we we have to keep distance we have to do things in, in different ways uh, another thing that we've learned and has surprised me very pleasantly is that we we conduct and we don't emphasize these things unlike some other school systems but we, we do it because it informs our learning we, we do standardized testing and particularly around language and around math what we saw was that our scores did not drop in those core subject areas when we were delivering it through distance now you of course will read different things in the media and it's true that in many places those scores did drop but they didn't drop at a place like ISB, and that's because we have the, the fantastic teachers we do. We have a solid curriculum supporting it, right? And the delivery was possible through technology, right? Motivated supporting families. There's an ecosystem of reasons why that would work. But it does open that door for us talking about, okay, how could we look at different models even on campus for delivering different types of learning? And we know based upon this experiment that none of us wanted to do, that there's an opportunity here where we wouldn't be sacrificing outcomes for, for, for running an experiment. So uh, that was a really uh, a very positive thing. And um, we're very pleased as educators that our students haven't fallen behind through this and in some ways probably have learned some resilience. Um, the other thing that we're really excited about and, and sort of in, in terms of a direction of travel, we've been having a lot of conversations about where do we go next as a school? So, well, this crisis has meant we've had to to really restrict some of the new initiatives that we're introducing just because so much focus and energy needs to go into keeping the school open and keeping things safe. It has opened the door to an idea around increasing the amount of personalized learning that we're able to provide using some of the technology and some of the learning that's happened uh, over the last 12 months. And so this is a really exciting conversation that we're engaged in. And when I was in Japan, I was a head of school in 2011, March 11, 2011, and we had the big earthquake. And that was an extremely hard event and a very acute crisis that suddenly came upon us. This is a crisis nonetheless, but, it, but it's been a very long extended one where the stress builds over time. But a term that we used when we were in Japan was this idea of post-traumatic growth. And not to suggest that this has been traumatic for everybody, but there has been a trauma in society and there's been a loss, right? But through this, we, we have to decide as people and as organizations, where do we go from here, right? And can we take this post-traumatic 
growth mindset towards what we're going to do as an organization and as people. And as a school that believes in learning and believes in, in, in moving forward, uh, this is really our approach to this, this, this crisis is trying to turn it around a little bit, see it as an opportunity and ask where can we go and how can we do them better in future for our kids. And I'm, I'm confident that this is, this is something we're going to be able to capture. Mm. I'm building on things that um, companies and people are looking for, like emotional intelligence. Um, is is a way of building that naturally i suppose through the shared experience of the community it's very true and i think through this you know when you look at the students that have um gone through this we, we had a bit of a joke and it's not a really funny joke but it's do you need a yearbook this year to remember 2020 and 2021 <laughs> right probably not it's etched in people's memories but the reason is because there has been a lot of learning. There's been a lot of reflection. There are things that this generation of student is going to be more capable of approaching things in their future life than, than, than people that passed through schools that didn't have this. So I think you're spot on. And that emotional intelligence, that cultural intelligence, that ability to work in different ways and be flexible, these are incredibly important skills. And it's not me saying this. This is what the workplace is saying. This is what employers are, are looking for. And uh, it's been forced upon us, but our kids have done amazing well. Mm. Absolutely. So this is a very special year for you coming up. Um, David, um, you must have been planning the future of the uh, anniversary of the school, which is going to be the 70th anniversary. Um, so how important is this milestone going to be to uh, the community at ISB? I think, I think honestly, I think these um, milestone moments are always important because they um, they remind us of the past and how important that is. I think ISB has always been one of those schools, at least since I joined uh, the school back in 2005, where um, we're very forward looking. Um, we have a reputation for innovation and, 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 and thinking about the future. But it's also been described as a school that is this unique blend of innovation and tradition. And I think the importance of recognizing the legacy upon which um, this school has been built over decades, um, the knowledge that has been built up over that time is really critical. And I think um, one of the things that um, is, is, is going to be really important at this moment as we look to the future, we come out of COVID next year, it's going to be hopefully all coinciding with an opportunity to bring lots of our alumni back, um, back to campus, um, to celebrate with us both the future and, um, and, and the past. And one of the things that um, when these moments happen, I'm always reflecting on is, is how much our former employees, our former students and former parents, our global alumni community love ISB. Um, I was looking through just today a survey that we recently did with um, several uh, thousand alumni and some of the comments that they were making. And um, there was a, a comment from someone from the class of 1978, so 40 something years ago. And, and this person, I will just read it to you. It was, ISB was and always will be uh, like a home to me and my family. And we will never forget how much we enjoyed this experience. And, and, and I do think that for somebody to have that memory, that impression, that sense of commitment and, and love for an institution 40 years later probably says something about the school. And, and we hear that as well from graduates um, who are just two or three years out. And, and I think that's all to say that one of the things we notice about this school that we, many of us work here because we love the place, um, is, is that it leaves its mark. It leaves its mark on future generations um, that, that years later they, um, they look back and they, they, see, they remember something about the chateau, the fields, the, the theatre, the, the forest, and, and, and the, more than anything, the wonderful teachers that, that I think had a transformative impact on them. So we're looking forward to a big celebration, a party, um, where hopefully, fingers crossed, we can actually all come together and not do it over Zoom. <laughs> well, I'm sure that will happen. So, James, um, you've had a lot of experience living in different countries. So, what was it that you noticed most about uh, moving to Belgium and living here? 
because these will be similar experiences for families and your students. Well, my um, family, we, we the last two places we've been have been in Thailand and in Dubai. So we're, we're really enjoying the seasons and the beautiful forests and everything that, that surrounds our, our neighborhood here. And I, I, those people that have been on the campus, we are adjoining uh, um, the, the big one of these big forest areas with lots of paths and all the rest. And so that element of nature is just amazing. A recommendation I would have for Belgium, they should get restaurants like they have in other parts of the world because I've yet to experience them except for once or twice <laughs> in October because with the lockdown, they've been closed. So I mentioned earlier about this idea of Christmas slowly happening that eventually I'm going to get to experience more of the uh, this, the city and, and the, the country. But um, it really has been a fantastic move for myself and my family. My, my sons go to the school and they're loving it really thriving and then slid right in immediately making friends and uh, are connecting even with face masks and, and everything that goes with that. So, so I really, um, I'm very happy that we're here and I can say that on behalf of my family as well. So it's a great place to live. Mm. You didn't mention chocolate. <laughs> <laughs> well, this is one of the temptations here between the, the, the chocolate and there's wonderful beer and there's all these other things that um, is is known for, for very, very good reason. And if people are listening to this from outside of Belgium and haven't lived here but are considering, I, I can tell you it's all true. <laughs> <laughs> the reputation is well deserved. Yeah. So. Good. So I think it's uh, time to wrap up now. So, David, um, if people are interested in finding more, out more, what's the best way to get in touch and find out more about ISB? What's the next step? I think, I think the best way is probably to look at our website, isb.be, and uh, there you can easily find uh, a contact to our admissions team, and any one of those members of the team will be happy to schedule a virtual visit, um, to if you're in Belgium, to to have a visit, although at the moment it has to be after hours when the students aren't in campus, so after four o'clock. Um, but I think, and I think then we begin a process where we listen to you, find out um, who you are, what you're looking for, and then begin that process of helping you choose and determine whether or not this is the right school for you. Mm. Good. Well, thank you very much for your time today. Um, is there any final um, thought about the future that you'd like to, to add to the conversation? What are you both well, would... looking for for the school and uh, yourselves, apart from chocolate, beer and pancakes? <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I think what I would say I'm most excited about the school is that we're, we're not just a very high functioning school, high performing school, but we, I think are on the cusp of moving into some really exciting territory educationally that I think is gonna benefit our kids in, in a very large way. And um, to some respect, we really need to wait for this COVID crisis to, to pass, but but you should check back in with us in a few months. We'll, we'll have some things to share with you. And, and from a personal point of view, I'm just looking forward to continuing to settle into, into Belgium and the spring is coming. And uh, people have told me how nice the spring is and we're starting to get a bit of a, <laughs> <laughs> a bit of a sense of it, so I'm, I'm I'm ready for it. My vitamin D awaits me outside. Yes, in the form of sunshine. And what about you, David? All this fantastic art and music and performances—is that what you're most looking forward to? Well, I think I think it's a great point. I mean, I think I think one of the things we miss is uh, our theatres full of uh, parents watching amazing performances, or um, up on the sports field seeing. Uh, uh, the hundreds of parents sitting uh, around at homecoming and and enjoying uh, a variety of games and 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 uh, and and those are the, that that vibrancy of the community is really something because right now parents are unable to come onto campus during the school day uh, for these kinds of events so just opening that up I think will um, that's something that James has yet to see that that real vibrancy of of a great night. Um, because I think I think in so many ways ISB really is more than a school. It's it is this home away from home that connects people together and families together. So for many people, it's about you know trying to get your kids to leave campus, let it, not so much trying to get them to school. <laughs> well put. Yeah. Good. Well, thank you very much for your time today. It's been a pleasure speaking to you both and we'll look forward to catching up in next developments and, of course, hearing all about the 70th 
anniversary celebration. So thank you very much for your time. Bye. Bye. -bye. Thank you. Thanks. So we've been talking today to James McDonnell, Director of International School of Brussels, and Dr. David Willows, Director of Advancement International School of Brussels. And I would suggest uh, catching up with that blog. And here's a lovely picture of the school and the contact details are there for you to get in touch and plenty of information on the website. This has been part of our series of webinars for the Spring International Education and Schools Fair. We have brought to you recently the benefits of bilingual education for children and opportunities for life, a focus on international education and schools in Thailand and international schools embracing change in missions and communications perspective. And we'll also be having a focus on the Netherlands and later schools in Singapore. There are plenty of webinar playbacks to watch from the Autumn Fair as well. So please do dip into those with lots about transition care and lots of different information on different curriculums and countries and regions. Please don't forget about the Relocate and Think Global People Awards. And we'd be delighted to receive your entries by the 21st of March. And Relocate Global and Think Global People is a multimedia with lots of free information and resources on our website, including um, international education and guides and our very popular education and schools section. So thank you very much for joining us. Please do uh, take advantage of the yet additional resources available through the spring fair period. Thank you once again to David and James for joining us. Goodbye.